Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are very briefly touching back uh, with the Artemis. It is in, still in free orbit of Mars, uh, not docked with the station. And so I just thought it might be nice to uh, go touch base and uh, make sure that they get back to their uh, back to Harmonia station in one piece. There's our lander, uh, now drifting aimlessly, uh, out of fuel, uh, has some air. But um, all the science has been recovered. Uh, Commander Glenn Watney Armstrong has also been recovered. And uh, we're now just uh, waiting to make a burn. There it is. And I'm sure there will be another one. Uh, I recorded this a, uh, a few days ago. But I'm just now getting around to editing it. And I'm, these gaps always leave my memory just a little fuzzy. So uh, there was a lot of ulaging of things. And... Uh, tinkering very precisely with nodes, although um, the thought of sending a refueling mission, which is absolutely a necessity at this point, uh, to our brave explorers here has uh, left me to be a little uh, fast and loose with our, our fuel uh, quantities and how we go about doing burns. So rather than waiting the three or four days that would have been otherwise necessary to uh, do a very low delta V uh, rendezvous. I just uh, went ahead and plotted a bunch of nodes, or at least an node, and I uh, got it done as quick as I could. Now our relative speed is pretty high. We should be approaching the station soon. So we'll just go ahead and try to burn off some of this relative delta V as quickly as we can. Keeping a close eye on that rendezvous planner window is uh, typically how I do these things. Just uh, keeping an eye on relative inclination, time to closest approach, and distance at closest approach being super, super useful tools. <laughs> yeah, now that most of that stuff is, uh, most of that relative inclination is killed off, I think we can do most of it through RCS, although the RCS system here on Artemis is delightfully underpowered, it turns out, and I think before we do any other long-term crewed missions, we may have to uh, revisit this design and uh, maybe either change fuel types on the thrusters, you get a, a bit more punch with uh, MMH and N2O, but you get a lot more efficiency, our ISP, with uh, Aerozine and uh, N2O. So that's kind of the trade-off there, and the additional of having like an additional fuel tank necessary to house something specific for just RCS system. I like the simplicity of just using one fuel type for absolutely everything. You'll notice that every ship involved in this Mars mission has carried exclusively uh, Aerozine 50 and Nitrogen Tetroxide because it's pretty universal. You can use it in RCS systems, you can use it in engines, and many varying types of engines. It is a very good uh, universal hypergolic. So we've uh, made our rendezvous with the station and now it's just a matter of moving ourselves into a position where we can redock with our HAP module. And you all know how much I adore docking. I am trying to work on my technique and my methods as far as maybe doing a changing along a single axis, but uh, Artemis has gotten a little unbalanced and yeah, maybe I'll just break down. No, I'm not getting docking port line indicator. I don't care how many times you yell at me. Now, this has just become a matter of principle. <laughs> I am principled in my terrible docking. <laughs> anyway, uh, lots of small adjustments, lots of uh, very tiny tweaks and maneuvers, and very trying to do this as delicately as possible, uh, especially with our relative speeds being so approximated anyway and also trying not to just uh, slam into things at ridiculous speeds and also the SAS system tends to want to throw things off balance should have slowed down a bit here thunk <laughs> yep talented <laughs> all right so we will uh, try again hopefully we didn't break anything or send uh, enough of a shock through the station to put it in the deorbit territory. We also move some fuel around to help uh, get those thrusters towards the nose of the Artemis uh, back online and balance us out a little bit more. That will always help. Thruster balancing. Bounce. That's two bounces and a station. 
at um, it will take something like eight minutes as our signal delay to turn the RCS system there on and it only has uh, the thrusters active on the HAB module because that's the only part of it that has any fuel. Should probably turn crossfeed enabled on. Bump. Docked. Thank goodness. All right, our entire crew is back on the station and safe, and so they are now just uh, going to play card games until resupply comes around. So we'll uh, we'll move some fuel around just to move fuel around. Really no actual point into doing this other than have module as the smallest tank, so it'll be the least likely to fuel. So you'd think that now is time to go uh, prep up some of those uh, refueling missions. Nope. We're going to rebuild some landers, because that's still what's freshest on my mind right now. So I'm going to start prototyping out the second generation of uh, crewed Mars landers. And here's hoping it works. So we uh, start out with the Agena core because uh, of that neat little exploit of if you start with a uh, automated command pod, you can retain the uh, tonnage limit with the crewed module even though there's no crew in it which is awesome so we're gonna go with the uh, lander can advanced because it takes uh, two people and so hopefully we'll be able to land uh, a pilot and a scientist or maybe a pilot and an engineer depending on how we decide to do it um, but the ascent stage was really where there was uh, a lot of things lacking so uh, instead of going with the lunar module ascent engines which proved to be just a, a little um, uh, they just didn't pack enough punch for their ISP. We can get a similar ISP out of these uh, AJ-10 advanced engines. They have unlimited ignitions instead of the 10. I'm also going to uh, bring up custom window editor here in MechJeb. I mean, eventually. Right now, I'm just gonna... I've remade a Delta V window for in-flight, but I did not set it for editor. And I... Somewhere in the myriad of game crashes... Over the course of that Mars landing, I lost my Delta V window, I, I lost my uh, my flight data window. So, uh, super annoying having to redo this, because I thought this was one of the default things that just kind of came with MechJib. So, uh, we're going to try to do an ascent on these two AJ-10s. Uh, we don't really need throttleability for ascent engines, but what we do need is their nice high ISP in like the 315 range which is great for Aerozine and uh, N2O, and um, unlimited ignitions, just in case. And they're relatively light. They're going to cost us a lot less in weight than you know, stacking up three or maybe even four of those lunar module ascent engines that it would take to get uh, something of similar weight all the way back to orbit. Also, I uh, should not forget the life support container. We'll just slap that under there. Uh, take a quick check. We've got about 13 days for a crew of two to uh, manage on this, and uh, we will need a docking port if we want to dock this with the station, which is the traditional means uh, other than, well, the traditional means of recovering a crew. You could do it EVA style like we did last time, but that just, uh, I don't know, it seems a little uh, being risky for risky's sake. <laughs> eh, independent power. It'll have its own solar panels, because it will probably take a couple of days in orbit to perform its rendezvous. And uh, I will never quite be sure on when the solar panels are lined up correctly. Yeah. That... Yeah, okay, good. They're not going to hit each other, that was just the point of that. And then, of course, our CS thrusters, because even though these engines do gimbal, which is another advantage they have over the, um, the uh, lunar module ascent engine... Um, Docking is really hard to do when you only have uh, engines. <laughs> I commend anyone who's tried it, but anyway, we're going to need a uh, good thruster placement. And uh, I'm hoping that I got the thruster placement a lot better uh, this time than I typically do. Lots of nice thrusters. Hopefully we'll have uh, all of our axes of control. I will need to go back in later and play with uh, RCS build aid, which still confounds me some, but I do tend to do uh, asymmetrical designs. Uh, of this is not, however. So, all right. And checking our Delta V, it looks like we can just get a little bit more out of this. We're just gonna 
try to shoot for around the 5 kilometers per second range. Uh, this lander is intended to launch directly from its descent stage without the aid of the descent stage helping pick it up like we did last time. So uh, it's probably going to need comms to some degree, and yeah, that we're just going to copy this over and give it two because it looks better. There's no other real means for that, and the fact that I have to tuck it out to the side like this to kind of comply with uh, the future of this plan. So we'll paint it just a bit. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm quite random about my paint jobs and rather insistent on the orange bottom sections for absolutely no reason whatsoever. That looks alright. I mean, it's not horribly offensive. Anyway. So, here's my plan for the bottom half. <laughs> is to uh, first protect the top half, and then just build out a nice massive tank underneath it uh, with landing engines. But I... I'll show you more of what I mean here in just a second. So with a proto of the descent stage built and some of the other logistics taken care of, this is kind of my plan, so to speak. Uh, I believe we've got Valentina in the hot seat right now. Giving this a test run, just making sure that all the mobility features will work. There's our three ladder. Make sure our landing gear provides clearance. We have that heat shield on the bottom, so uh, if that gives you any indication on how we're going to try to bring this in and a docking port up top, because of course we're going to need one of those as well. So anyway, Valentina is just going to double check to make sure all the ladders work, because it's uh, a lander that you can't get back into or that you just fall haphazardly out of is not going to do us a whole lot of good. So the uh, the delta V requirements are mostly there. <laughs> uh, I would like a little bit more out of the descent stage. Uh, we've got four uh, lunar module uh, descent engines down there. They are throttleable. Uh, this variant, I believe, has five ignitions uh, at a cost of a little bit of its ISP. So we just need to jump over the heat shield before we start climbing back into the pod. But all the clearances work. The fact that we can fire off one of these fairings works. Um, I'm hoping that we can get all the way to the ground with that fairing still intact, just as a matter of uh, protecting. Yep, and this is certainly interesting. It looks like she's still attached to the lower ladder. It hasn't transitioned up to the ladder on the hatch itself. But we are able to board. That's what matters right now. We'll certainly have time to correct other things later. And this part got super interesting. So we'll just uh, move these engines down. And then the staging menu goes a little wonky. That's very interesting. And now they're just not there. <laughs> yeah, you notice our, uh, our the stage with our engines has just disappeared. It did not blend into another stage. It's supposed to be here in this little gap, but it is not, interestingly enough. So, <laughs> Val's just going to have to manually give the command to activate all four of these engines. We're just doing a uh, fuel run test. I've got some uh, cross-feed enabled on that, uh, that fairing right below the lander. I just want to make sure that it's only going to draw from those four satellite tanks. Alright, engines are active. Of course, they're not going to push this thing anywhere. It is entirely too heavy. But we are draining. That's fantastic. They are feeding fuel just from those tanks, and because the delta V number on the ascent stage is not moving, uh, I can be assured that it is not draining fuel uh, from the actual ascent stage, which is uh, which is really nice. So this kind of turned into a lengthy rundown. Um, never left the ground, thankfully. It was not designed to take off here, but uh, there will be some future testing. The big qualm right now is that this thing fully fueled comes in at right around a hundred tons. So we're going to have to see how much defueling of it we can do before we can stick it on top of a DN5. Um, but this may necessitate the R&D of a new launch system. Now, uh, as a little spoiler, I'll tell you that uh, advanced uh, liquid hydrogen engines or closed cycle uh, 
liquid hydrogen engines are just around the corner. We're about 200 and some odd days from unlocking those, which includes the RS-25. And for that, I am super, super excited because uh, then we can really bring the DN5 or the DN series into its full potential and start putting some really heavy things in orbit. So we might not have to defuel this thing to get it anywhere. But in the meantime, I'm going to prep that uh, refueling mission and then we've got a few other missions to get to in the meantime. So that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.